Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, let's discourse marketers who complain to Tinubu over cheap Dangote refinery diesel. Now, petroleum marketers in Nigeria have complained to President Bola Tinubu that the price drop of diesel from Dangote refinery, now at 900 naira per litre, is negatively affecting their businesses. Due to low local patronage, Dangote refinery has been forced to export most of its diesel and aviation fuel as local petroleum dealers, including NNPC, are not purchasing sufficient quantities. The refinery has also begun producing PMS, that is petrol, but may be forced to export it as well if local traders and NNPC do not buy the product. Challenges such as insufficient crude oil allocation and having to import crude have disrupted the refinery's operations, contrary to the initial goal of adding value by refining local sourced crude. Now joining us to discuss this is Anik Agule, he's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to all our viewers globally. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. I know you're live in London, so thank you for coming on this morning. Anyways, let's talk about Nigeria and the petroleum sector right now. There's a lot going on with NNPC, with Dangote, with petroleum marketers, everybody. In fact, even the citizens as well, there's a lot going on because there's been scarcity. Um, the, the fuel price has increased tremendously. In fact, finding a product is one thing and then even having to pay for it is another. But I want to get your comment on the petroleum sector in Nigeria, where we are now, where we used to be just over a year ago, and seeing how things have just metamorphosed into this whole big, I wouldn't really call it a crisis, but almost getting there. I want to get your comment, please. Aya, thank you very much for that question. Uh, it's actually intriguing to see what's playing out mm. because all our hopes were on Dangote refinery that once the refinery begins to produce that we are going to attain uh, product sufficiency and product security yeah. and even at cheaper prices because I mean you look at it and you say there's absolutely no way you can transport crew to a place like Singapore or Rotterdam, refine it there at high cost because the wages there are quite high and everything, and then import it back to Nigeria and it will sell at the same rate, uh, at the same rate like uh, crude, uh, crude oil refined in our backyard there in Lekki. Mm -hmm. So we expected some drop in prices and all of that. But strangely, what has happened is that Dangote produces uh, the diesel and pushes the diesel into the Nigeria market. And then when they started to produce PMS, which is the premium motor spirit or popularly called petrol, yeah. uh, we expected them to announce their price for petrol. Dangote refinery petrol cost X amount of money. And then the government can transparently decide that Nigeria should either buy the petrol like that or they are going to subsidize the petrol and all of that. But repeatedly, Dangote has been unable to name the price for his petrol. Instead, Dangote says, oh, I'm waiting on the Federal Executive Council. I'm waiting on the NMPC. I have never seen a business, a private sector business for that matter, that produces goods and is unable to name the price for their goods. Instead, they are waiting on the government. And then... We hear this uh, story about um, uh, marketers not willing to uptake Dangote's petrol. How can they uptake petrol when he has not even named the price of the petrol? You mm. know? So, this, 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 to me, it, it, it's just a, a conundrum. And the earlier we, we run this thing like a business, whereby Dangote, as a producer, tells us that this is my cost of production and this is my profit margin, therefore, this is my price. And then we now begin to know whether we are going to buy it outrightly at that rate or we are going to allow him to compete with imported petrol so long as there's no subsidy on it and all of that. But what I now hear, or we hear now, which is again surprising, is that Dangote Refinery is now claiming that there are some importers, and I will say importers in quote, mm. who are now saying, oh, we prefer to import because this year petrol is cheap, so... Is disrupting our market. I ask the question. Up to this moment, 
we were told that the NMPC was the sole importer of petrol into Nigeria. Hmm. So where have these importers suddenly sprung up from? Where were they? Or is it the NMPC that is the cabal that has been accused now that they don't want to buy Dangote's petrol because it's cheaper? Understandably, you will expect that for an importer, assuming but not conceding, that there are importers apart from the NMPC. If the importer brought his petrol from Rotterdam or from, from Houston or from um, uh, Singapore or wherever, and they sold it and made a margin of 10%, and now they go to Dangote refinery and they buy the petrol cheaper, they still make a margin of 10%. The question then will be that what's then the problem? If you are making the same margin, what's the problem? What is your problem with the price? Mm. Because if the price is cheaper, but you are still making the same margin that you were making before, then you should be happy. Because, because you're making more one, now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Number one, if the products are cheaper, because remember in the downstream, the downstream business, the downstream petroleum business is a low margin, high volume business. Mm. So you want to sell as many millions of liters of petrol as possible so that when you multiply by the small margin, you still make big money. So if these importers, if they are really genuine, what is their grouse? Because they should be happy now that the products are cheaper because the product being cheaper means more people will buy the product. Yeah. People that ordinarily wouldn't feed their tank will now feed their tank. So that is high volume. And they are making their margin on that volume. Then they should be happy. Why are they not happy? So for me, the story is not clear at all. Mm -hmm. And perhaps is Dangote refinery not giving us all the, 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 the data? Or if truly some marketers have written to the president that, oh, Dangote petrol is cheaper, and so we the prefer diesel. to import. Let, let the president just call their bluff. Yeah? Let them go and import the petrol. And let them compete with Dangote's products in the market. And the, and the consumers will choose. Mm. So, I, I know that one of the, like you've said, there's a lot, there's a conundrum, and we don't even understand it. There's no proper clarity with all of this. I mean, it would be nice for Dangote to come out and say, this is what I want, you know, to sell my product. For the marketers, obviously, if they complain about the cheap diesel, you should be happy, like you said. You should be happy that you're making more money, which is great for you. And then, of course, people can even afford it. But one issue that we're having right now is um, Dangote is saying there's some sort of low patronage and it's looking at exporting. So it's going to export the diesel, it's going to export, export the fuel as well. At this point, how can we get security for the product? Because, like I said in the opening statement, the one issue, aside the money issue, maybe you don't have enough money to buy, but even finding it as well. I remember someone was in the queue for over seven hours and still bought petrol at 960 naira per litre, right, just a few days ago. So you, most times you don't even see gas stations or petrol stations that are selling. And the, the, this is quite unfortunate because this product is one product, one product that almost everybody uses. So, of course, if that happens, you're, it's going to affect transportation. It's going to affect, um, you know, homes who are using it as an alternative source of power, even businesses as well. So how can we make sure that we have the security? Because right now, Dangote says he might just export it. So how can the president or the NNPC or whoever, you know, is part of this, um, you know, committee when it comes to the petroleum industry, how can we ensure that we have Dangote as a, we have him locked down here, where he's going to prioritize Nigeria even before other countries? You see, we have a problem here. So we have a problem on both sides. We have mm. a problem on the Dangote refinery side, which I have already enunciated, which yeah. is how can the private sector business produce goods and are unable to name the price for their goods? This has never happened before. Mm. Why is Dangote Refinery waiting on the Federal Executive Council or NMPC? Did they build a refinery for him? He should tell us how much he's selling his petrol. Like if he's going to export the petrol now, is he going to wait on the government of the nations where he will export to before he will name the price? Mm -hmm. No. He's going to sell his, 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 his petrol to the uptakers in those countries. 
So that is one side. The other side is the government. So you, you discover that the government keeps saying, oh, we're carrying out reforms, we're carrying out reforms. Removal of subsidy is a reform. It's not a reform. A reform has to be backed up with remove this, removing the structural imbalances in that sector and making the sector better to deliver value to the citizens. You know, that is not yet seen. And let me tell you one thing. You know, in the transportation sector, like you have a car. Yeah. If you put petrol in the car alone, the car is not going to move. There are many other things that need to be in that car for the car to move. For yeah. instance, engine, engine oil. oil. Right. Engine oil must be in that car. Is the government through the NMPC dictating the price of engine oil in the market? Mm. Is the question. government dictating the, the, the price of spare parts for which that car needs to function in the market? Is the government dictating the, 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 the price of even importing that car in Nigeria? People are bringing the, the cars, they are selling the cars according to what gives them a profit. So if you go to like Lagos, where the cars are just uh, are imported and they land, you will buy a car cheaper than if you now go to Joss. Where, right. we, you know, so why can't the government just allow this space? Let Dangote bring out his petrol and sell it at the price that will give him a profit. Let those who are able to import the petrol also import it and compete with Dangote. Let the NMPC or the government remove their hands out of whatever they want to call subsidy and let there be competition so that Nigerians can at least buy the petrol. Look, the example you gave of the gentleman who spent seven hours at a petrol station to buy it at 960 Naira. It would be better for him to have bought it at 1,100 by just driving in, filling yeah. his tank and going. Yeah. Instead of wasting his uh, seven hours. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the government should just allow this sector to operate so that consumers and suppliers will interact and pay the appropriate prices. You know, Dangote cannot hold us to ransom because if he overprices his products, then he will have to compete with the imported products. If the imported products land cheaper, we buy the imported products. This is, the, this is the scenario that the government should embark on. Unfortunately, we are not hearing the Minister for Petroleum, who is the president himself, you know, say anything about this thing because he's busy. So this is the reason why he should hand over that portfolio to somebody who can actually take ownership of it and run the petroleum sector so that, like you said, we can achieve product sufficiency and security at the lowest price possible. Mm. Mm. I, I I totally agree. I totally agree with that. And I, I mean, listening to you speak about the NMPC, um, which led to my next question now. My former guest, the person I had on Off the Press, you know, he his sentiment was the NMPC needs to, you know, just take out their hands from it, which you've also mentioned now. Because he said you cannot be a referee and also be a player in the same game so it's important that you choose wherever you want to be with the structure of the nnpc do you think they're doing a good job at the moment and what do you think we can do to overhaul our petroleum sector to ensure that we have a better working um, petroleum sector for nigerians nnpc is one of the biggest headaches mm. that nigeria has wow. you may probably have heard the report where they said their subsidiaries combined made losses running into about 22 trillion. Mm. What that means practically is that if we didn't have those subsidiaries, then we will be 22 trillion richer. Yes. Right. And don't forget that our national budget, our national budget is 28 trillion. Mm -hmm. And we have this giant behemoth that he just threw 22 trillion of our money into the into the, the gauntlet so it is better we didn't have it and for me this is where i have a problem the nmpc has been entrusted with nigeria's four refineries if those refineries were working at their full capacity 
we will, perhaps Dangote refinery may not even have come into existence mm. because Nigeria would have had product sufficiency. There would have been no gap for Dangote to try to fill in terms of petroleum products. If at all he built a refinery, it would have been for export. Mm. You know, so those refineries are dead, and they are dead because the NMPC. Who is responsible for them have allowed them to die yet the NMPC is paying full staff cost at those refineries and that is the genesis of this problem so now the NMPC haven't killed the refineries went and made themselves the sole importer of petrol into Nigeria with all their inefficiencies and all the stories that we have been hearing about ships coming in signing paper going out and all of that the same NMPC now wants to go and position themselves between Dangote Refinery and us. And I ask the question, why? Why is the NMP NMPC pursuing us to everywhere? Now that Dangote has come with his private sector patrol, they will not even let us interact with Dangote Refinery. And we have the NMPC sitting in between us and them, and we have got to the point now that they have frustrated Dangote Refinery Sufficiently enough, Dangote Refinery is now saying, I will send my, my petrol uh, overseas. And he has to. You know why he has to? The, when, you, when you refine the petrol, you put the petrol in storage tanks. Mm. Remember that this refinery is working every day. Yeah. So the petrol is being refined and put in storage tanks. Those storage tanks are fast filling up. And we are not of taking that petrol. So if we don't uptake it, Dangote Refinery will have two choices. Either to stop production, since there will be no more storage, or to sell the product to whoever wants to take them so that he can continue production. He has to produce. He invested 20 billion. He needs to produce to make his money. So the NMPC cannot ground his refinery, just like they have grounded their four refineries. So if I were President Tinibu, the NMPC is the first thing I will deal with on my first day in office. Yeah? I will mm. take out the management that has not produced anything from those refineries. I will then set the NMPC on the course of privatization so that the NMPC will become a fully privatized company. Remember, privatization doesn't mean government ownership will go. Mm. Like in NLNG, it's being managed by the private sector, even though it's being owned by the government. And I would have applied that kind of solution to the NMPC. If President Tinibu did that on day one in office, I tell you that at least one or two of our refineries will be back up today working with the private sector, bringing in the investment. Hmm. I totally agree with you. And I like the fact that, you know, you're, you're saying things that kind of segues into my next question, because I was going to ask about our refineries. We have four refineries in Nigeria. And of course, um, if they were working, I think they're supposed to be at a capacity of over 450, um, you know, million barrels or something like that. I don't have those facts right. But 25,000 barrels. Yes, exactly. Per day. Per day, yes. So imagine if we if that was working, that means we would have enough for ourselves, and we can even export to other countries if possible. Do you think that we're not really looking at even the revenue that we could possibly get from this? And instead instead of looking at that, we're spending so much money having to import this fuel. What can we do to ensure? I I know for a fact that I think the Potakot refinery was supposed to start operations in August, but then, of course, as per usual, they've moved the date time and time again. Kaduna refinery was scheduled for December. We're not sure if that's going to happen anymore. But looking at our refineries that are dead and almost non-existent at the moment, where do we start from? If we want to really grow our economy and, you know, even generate revenue from crude and petrol, PMS, um, D, um, DPK and all of that, what can we do now? Where do we start from at this point? So that is where I started to say that President Tinibu never misses an opportunity to inform the world that his government is undergoing reforms. Mm. But by simply removing fuel subsidy without tackling the structural you know, imbalances and deficiencies in the downstream petroleum sector is no reform at all. A reform disrupts a sector and then, and, then, and then rebuilds it to deliver better value. So the refineries, as we have them, even though they are dead, 
they are not valueless. Because let's not forget, when President Obasanjo was leaving office 17 years ago, he sold, I think it was 51%, it wasn't even 100% of the Kaduna and Potako refineries for over $700 million. Dan Gote that just built a refinery now, Ote Dollar and Co., they paid over $700 million for a share of two, the, two of the refineries. So that's to tell you that there's still value in those refineries. So President Tinibu should have simply done either of two things. Number one, he would have just swept away the, the management of the NNPC, set the NNPC on a private sector course, and then by now the refineries will already be in refurbishment, if not that some of them would have started operating. Or if he wanted to leave the management of the NNPC intact, because maybe they are his friends or whatever, for whatever mm. reason, that he has left them intact. He should have taken the refineries away and put them back on the market, just like President Obasanjo Joe did. And if he did that, let's say President uh, Tinibu at Eagle Square said, fuel subsidy is gone. Then immediately he went to his office on the first day. He set up a tax team that said, look, these four refineries were put up in the market before. That means the template for the sale already existed. Take that template, dust it up with current realities, and put the refineries back in the market. Perhaps within six months, he would have sold the refineries. Hmm. And now that he's in office for like 15 months, that means for like nine months, the new owners would have got to work with those refineries. I can assure you that at least one or two of them will be back into production. Because the refining technology is a simple thing. It's about cooking crude oil. Cook it and then you you derive for your petroleum products at different uh, boiling points. That mm. is what those boys in the Niger Delta are doing. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's not a rocket science. And uh, we, we have people who are interested in this refinery because the Nigerian market alone of 200 million people cannot be ignored by anybody. Mm. Well, I hope that, you know, they're watching, that they're trying their best to put all the policies in place to implement these things because petrol is is one of the products that we need so badly in Nigeria. And if we don't have it or if we're buying, I, I never thought a day would come that we're buying petrol for almost a thousand naira. Just last year, it was about 186 naira. And a year later, we're talking a thousand. Some people are even buying it for as high as a thousand five hundred in other states. It's quite unfortunate. And I think this should be something that should really, really be looked into from the president to, you know, everyone involved because I always say the welfare of the citizens should be paramount for every government. So they need to be looking at how, you know, the citizens should just have better welfare, we're well taken care of, and hopefully they do something about it. This is where we have to wrap it up here. Nick, we want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I must say that you have summarized it beautifully. Oh. <laughs> the, let the welfare of the citizenry be the main goal of our leaders and they will never get you wrong. That's right. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, sir. Have an amazing weekend. And you too. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, we've been speaking with Nick Aguli. He's a public affairs analyst. And we've just been talking about our petroleum sector. Marketers have been complaining to the president over cheap Dangote diesel. But hopefully the president, the governors, the ministers, the commissioners, everyone in government will start to get things right for the people. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. My name is Rome Paulson. And I also would like to say happy birthday to my friend, Pamela Osanapo. Well, today is Friday the 13th and it's her birthday. And She's such a wonderful friend. She's my sister. I love her so much. Thank you for being an amazing friend to me. And this is where we have to wrap up the show. Thank you for having a breakfast with me. As always, my name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend.